Today we're going to wrap it up with our seventh and final session in the series all about crimping with gates, so best practices and North American equipment overview. So I highlight North American equipment overview because I know we sell different crimpers in different regions. So for our friends in Europe and the Middle East, Africa and uh, Australia, if y'all have stayed up to stick with us here today, I know some equipment might be different over there, but the best practices are more or less the same. So hopefully you'll still be able to get quite a bit out of this. So. Moving on to the next slide, and again, panelists, since I'm sharing a little different view, if the slides aren't catching up or anything, please let me know and I'll figure out what's going on. But should be on the summary of last week, just real quick, we talked about the Gates North American Hydraulic Catalog, and really using it as a reference for all the technical tips and product specifications that we've talked about over the past five weeks. So we know doing a lot at you, it's been, you know, like I said, seven weeks, every week, one hour of content that we typically cover. and two to three hours. So it's been a lot coming in a hurry. So hopefully last week was all about um, or gave you where you need to go to follow up and go to that catalog to reference everything that we've taught you about over the past seven weeks. And this week we're bringing it all together with the assemblies and the crimping. So I will talk about the importance of following all crimp specs. So that includes your crimper setting, your dies, measuring the outside diameter like we talked about following proper pre-crimp procedures that always need to be followed. So we'll talk about what some of those are. And then we'll, we'll get to what we're really excited to show you here, how to cut hose and crimp assemblies using the equipment. So again, we've got some videos that show you with all of our saws, or at least our most popular saws and crimpers that we offer here in North America. Um, and Jason and Marty did a great job putting this together. Hopefully you're able to see the videos here. If you have any issues with the connection or with the videos coming through, we're going to make those available through your Gates reps. Gates reps, I'll put them in this iPower folder that I have for this webinar here, hopefully after this today. And feel free to share those videos with anyone who asks. So it's really about everything you see at the bottom coming together to make a safe assembly like you see at the top right. So with that, Jason Caldwell, I believe you're going to kick us off with kind of an intro to what crimp specifications are all about. Yes, that's correct, uh, Jacob. Thank you uh, very much. So let's uh, just jump right into the uh, the crimp information here. So the um, in order to make a proper assembly, you need to have the data, uh, the crimp information, to put it all together. And the crimp specifications are required to make an assembly. And if you do not have the specs to make the assembly, then check online or contact us just to be sure. You don't want to make an assembly that you make up the own, your own crimp information and um, chance a, a potential failure in the field that can cause someone to get hurt or some damage. So just kind of right at the very beginning here, let's uh, just kind of get that kind of level set here. So the, um, the crimp information is going to be the setting, die information, final outside crimp OD, crimp outside diameter, and then the details to make that safe assembly. So uh, we are going to go into uh, some of the machines and, and different machines require kind of different types of data. And uh, so some of the machines have onboard information and we'll see that in a little bit, but kind of the looking at the different areas where you can get crimp information, you have our online ecrimp.gates.com and you also have the phone mobile app. You've got the printed crimp data manual and there's also stickers or cards that are attached to crimpers. And uh, really the one takeaway from this uh, slide is that um, eCrimp is the best source of crimp data that we have out there. Any kind of printed material or something that takes a cycle to get it updated, uh, you just you, you miss that information for a period of time and then, uh, and then you get caught up when new printed materials there. Uh, the good thing about eCrimp and our applications that point to eCrimp for that data is that eCrimp is uh, updated um, you know, almost weekly, if not more than that. So we got a couple examples here, uh, but really what we uh, tend to refer everyone to is that eCrimp information. So just kind of really taking a, a real quick look at crimp information or the specifications explained, uh, you're going to want to get down to the hose, the coupling, the size and the crimper that you're going to need. And just kind of looking at this bottom line here, let's just kind of go from left to right. And uh, so this is an example information that you would have out there. You have your dash size that's out there and your hose family. So this would be the 16 MXD. 
and then the coupling that you're going to use for it. Now, we talked uh, last week about the hose coupling interface. This refers to the hose coupling interface, in this case, a 16G. And then there's some other columns of information. Now, some of those where you see nuns and foals, like, for example, Skive, uh, that's, those are placeholders there for, you know, if we do have information or hoses that do require uh, some kind of uh, additional data that's associated with it. Uh, but if you see those kinds of words there, you know that you've got full insertion or you don't skive it, those types of information. The next is the final crimp OD uh, that you're required to uh, get to. So your crimp uh, outside diameter. So in this uh, case, 1.685, the tolerance and uh, uh, shown in the next column, it's not hi highlighted there. And then the die set that's required. And then uh, for this particular uh, machine, it requires a crimp setting. So for example, this would be a 2.81 that's required to uh, be put into the 707. Now different machines requires different ways to be uh, input. And uh, again, some of the machines have onboard information like our tablet enabled machines. But uh, that's generally speaking how the, the layout is, um, is put out there. Now, before we go to the next slide, uh, well, actually, no, this is a good slide right here. So let's just stay right here, Jacob. So here's some uh, close-up markings of the uh, markings that you will see on dies. And, uh, and what this does is this uh, reflects the die set that's being called out in the crimp information. Uh, pretty straightforward. You need to make sure you have the right dies. Uh, for the for the machine and for the setting that's required. Now the one thing that I uh, want you to kind of take away from here so that everyone's aware of this is is our theory on our die sizings. So for example, uh, you'll see the, the center two, you'll see a 733 die and a 16-33 die. The the dash or the size of that die is would be the 33. And, uh, and the way our theory works is the 33 series dies or the, the dies that end in 33 are used for a certain group of hoses. So for example, a 33 die would be used for half inch hose, uh, for many of our half inch hoses. So the 33 die set for the 707 is a 733 die. The 33 die set for a, 16, a GC16 is a 16-33. And the dies for an MC420 would be MC-33. So you would know that uh, that sequence of dies or that number of die is, is kind of used across the machine. So, for example, if you had an MC420 and you were crimping a family of hoses and you wanted to upgrade to a 707 or add the 707 into your shop, you would know by the dies that you're using for the MC420 what series of dies best match what you already have for your 707. And then the only time you would need to add to it is if you're adding different hoses that re would require different dies, and then you'd have to look up those specific dies. So um, hopefully everyone already knew that, but uh, that gives a, a little explanation of our die series uh, um, methodology, okay? So let's uh, look at the next slide and talk about getting um, uh, information out of eCrimp. Now, I mentioned earlier that eCrimp is the definitive source for crimp information. It's actually the uh, most up-to-date up, up information that we have out there. And so you start with, uh, in that application, you have the ability to uh, start filtering information out. Now, this is a good area if, um, if you're not uh, familiar with where we have crimp information for accessories, you can select that you want to search accessories. Hopefully it's uh, viewable on your screen, but in the uh, in the top left box, you'll see the, the left hand side of the box is for your hose types, whether it's industrial hose or hydraulic or both. And then the box on the right allows you to search accessories, which would be hose guards and, and other types of sleeves that you would uh, put to onto the hose uh, after you've made the assembly. So it allows you to, to search that information. So basically what you're doing is you're just starting to take that information and, uh, and pare it down to the data that you're looking for. So in, the, uh, in box number two, the one to the right, you start with your crimper and your hose type. Now there's a, a bunch of different ways you can use this crimp data. But let's just say, you know, we're going to go through the, the traditional one. So you have your, you know, in this one, you'd select your crimper and your hose family that you want. So this happens to be MXT and 707. 
and then uh, and then in the the third, and well, you can continue on selecting, but the third one shows a few more uh, criteria that's also been uh, selected here, and that would be the hose dash size and the stem type. So by the time you put all that stuff, all that information together, you're kind of zeroing in on the data that you're looking for, and at that point, you can add your results to the list, and then slide, and then and and quadrant four we show the information for crimp data for that the hose that you've got selected so it kind of narrows it all the way down to the information that you need so so that's kind of um, navigating through eCrimp again if you understand databases and and starting to do searches through the database you could start and say well I've got these couplings and this machine so you know what hoses can I crimp with it? So there's a bunch of different ways in which you can filter this data to give you the information um, that you need. So let's take a, a real quick look at what else you can do in eCrimp. So here's a great example of what you can do with the data from eCrimp. So once you've identified all your crimp information that you need, now this is a, a great example of taking that, um, adding results to the list for the family of products that a customer may be using or that's going to be crimped at that machine or a specific shop. So now you have this limited uh, view of hoses that you want to make available to the customer. So then what you can do is after you get all of that information into your custom list in eCrimp, you can then export it and some of those columns that we're talking about, full insertion or skive length that don't apply to this uh, assembly procedure, you can remove those. And now what happens happens you get a, a more compact succinct crimp data um, presentation for your customer and then you can highlight certain things you can as you see here you've got you can highlight rows um, make the uh, font a little bit larger so they stand out uh, to present that information to the assembler right at the site uh, where they're making those assemblies and what's nice about this is from their shop standpoint this uh, good example using 4 through 16 M3K with Mega Crimp, that's all the information they have there. That also corresponds with the hoses that they have in stock. So it helps eliminate that chance of someone using the wrong information uh, to make an assembly and then puts the settings right there uh, in front of the operators that they can load into the machine to, to make the assembly. So now um, I know that uh, some of the um, other panelists have a lot of experience putting crimp information uh, charts out there. And before we jump to the next slide, uh, do you guys, is that kind of in keeping with best practices or do you guys have other um, things that you use with uh, the crimp information, the custom crimp charts? Yeah, I was just going to say, Jason, that, that the uh, color coding is also helpful. So the color of the chart matches the color of the ley line of the hose. So that's always helpful, too, in safe, safety and enforcing safety. So. Okay. All right. Um, and I actually remember yeah. something that – oh, go ahead, Jacob. And Jason, I just wanted to point out, too, one other thing I just noticed Keith did up here. He put his email and the date of when he created it. So. Mm -hmm. If they have any question about that crimper, they want to add hose, they want to do that, they're not calling around, they're not Googling who near me sells gates. They know exactly who to contact, who set up that machine, who built that chart for them. So be sure to put your contact info up here so you can make sure to keep being the person that gets called when that end user is the hose. That's a, a great point there. Now, Jacob, uh, one thing that you had um, uh, mentioned before um, is that if if you've got uh, a customer that you're sending hoses out to on a periodic basis, say that you're selling bulk hose and couplings to them, um, on a periodic basis, uh, you can proactively include updated crimp information that would go with their shipment just to make sure that that new information is going out to those machines. You know, one of the challenges you have with printed material is it can go out, out of date almost immediately. So this gives you the ability to... Um, um, this gives you the ability to, to reach out and have a uh, connection with your customer and make sure that they have the most up-to-date information. And especially if there's a new hose that comes out and they start buying that new hose or a new combination of hoses and couplings, you can add that to their chart and make sure that they have the most up-to-date information so they're making safe assemblies. All right. 
Thanks, Jacob. Let's uh, let's take a look at the phone app. Now, uh, the previous one was a little bit of the printed material, uh, very similar to like stickers and things like that, or, or the crimp manual. Now we're starting to get uh, look a little bit uh, closer into some digital information. Uh, what's uh, what you're going to see in the uh, videos that are coming up? Uh, Marty will be using the phone app to get the crimp information for the machines that he's uh, uh, demonstrating. And the phone app is uh, available from the um, Apple Play Store or the uh, the, the Google um, application store. Uh, you download that. I know that we're in the process of doing, you know, making some, uh, you know, some adjustments to how we do the programming so it gets uh, faster updates. And uh, but really, a, a great tool when you're out remotely uh, for for getting crimp information or up to date information. Now, the one thing that I will tell you is the application currently keeps a small data file on your phone. So, so you do have to go in periodically and get the updated data set. And we do that because sometimes these uh, crimp equipment are located in remote areas where you don't have Wi-Fi connection. And so we want to be able to uh, allow you to update your, your phone in order to go into those areas and still have up-to-date data. And from there, you can uh, you basically do a similar thing in eCrimp. You start limiting the data that you want to see. You start with all of it. You start with your crimper. Then you move and select your hose and your size and your stem type. Then uh, once you get all that in there, you can view your results. And then from that last screen on the right, from there, you can, you can uh, export it or you can email it or you can actually even change um, the um, um, uh, to metric sizing if that's uh, you know more popular for your customer or in your ma market so your crimp ODs will show up in 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 uh, the metric sizing uh, versus the inch sizing so really good uh, uh, really good uh, customization and and really good uh, ability to get the uh, information out into your hands so let's Jason, uh, when, I, when, I, when I do this class with safe hydraulics right it, it, as long as the plant supervisor and the, and the safety supervisor approve, uh, this is a great, when you're going through safe hydraulics and you get to the crimper section, it's a great time to stop and make sure everybody who's going to be authorized to work the crimper in on site has downloaded this eCrimp app and they have it on their phone. So that's, it's a great, great way to move through safe hydraulics and then crimp, crimping uh, procedures in the safe hydraulics class. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a great point. So let's take a look at, uh, I think the next one uh, refers to the printed material next. Okay, so here's a, here's a good example of uh, one of the challenges you have with printed material. Now, printed material is good up to a limit, but here's an example of uh, crimp information that uh, is, is significantly dated from um, its revision date and also the hose names that it references. And so you have to be really cautious about that. And, and uh, you know, crimp information, while it doesn't typically change much over time, if there are changes or updates, or more importantly, new hoses that are added, it allows you to, to get that information at the machines. So if you do have customers out there using uh, printed material, be sure to uh, start getting them moved towards uh, digital information, whether it's the eCrimp or custom charts. Um, and like Keith just mentioned, those authorized users, users having them to have access to uh, the crimp information from the Google Play Store or the iTunes Store is, uh, is really critical. So. Hey, the miracle, the miracle about this 25-year-old chart is that you can still read it, sort of. Normally, <laughs> they've been dragging their dirty finger across it for 25 years, and you can't even read it. So that's pretty amazing right there. Yes, it is. So, I mean, and, uh, you know, so the... Like I mentioned earlier, some of the, the, the newer crimpers that we're in, or many of the newer crimpers that we're introducing have more of a digital interface. So we really kind of uh, are, are overcoming some of these challenges uh, that are out there in the marketplace. And that is uh, really a, found, uh, a foundation to, to allow people to make the best performing assemblies uh, with the, the best information at their fingertips. So. So let's uh, take, uh, let's see, if the next slide, Jacob. I think we're getting into a transition. Okay, so uh, now we're yeah. going to jump into the saws, and we're going to turn that over to Dave. So, Dave, if you'd talk us through the saws real quick. I will. Good afternoon. I have the pleasure to talk to you about some of our newer and, and existing saws. Um, Jacob, if you'll move to the next slide. 
run a quick video here to give you a, a live view of how this thing is operating. Everyone understands the importance of flexing the hose to get a straight cut so that it opens up nice and even. Perfect. This saw has got a lot of advantages. It's one of our newer products. It goes well with one of our new crimpers that are also uh, released in the field, our smaller portable stuff. This thing's great for off-site, rail, forestry, marine, anywhere you need accessibility. The saw is 28 volt DC portable, battery operated. It will cut hose up to one inch for spiral. It comes standard currently with a, a, with a composite blade. Um, and we will be offering a new optional knife blade. Um, a lot of you guys are familiar with the scallop or metal blade. Uh, some advantages, a little less grit and grind and debris um, when you're cutting braided hoses, but wonderful tool, very lightweight, very convenient. See at the back of pickup trucks and service vehicles all day long. Move on to the next one, please. Our 208 has been around for quite some time. It's a great everyday shop saw. Again, we're reflecting the pins there, make it very important to understand. And a lot of guys will take a grease pencil and mark those for a quarter inch hose, three eighths hose, half inch hose. And what Marty was explaining is the flex of the hose there. Again, so that when you cut it, we're using a metal knife blade there, a lot less smoke, a lot less debris. Um, with the cut, nice, clean, sharp. Um, Good saw overall, comes through through inch and a quarter, um, four spiral also. Been around for a long time. It's a little bit heavier, not easy to, to take out in the field, of course. Can move on to the next one, please. Most recently, we've released a couple of new saws, our SW series. This is kind of building upon the last saw that you saw that you just viewed. This saw cuts four wire uh, up to inch and a quarter. It's 110 volt. And this thing's a hot, whole lot more rigid. It's for larger volumes, great for hose shops and high duty applications. This saw is unique in that it was built to cut hoses and hoses only. Um, and it does a very good job. It's easy to operate. It's extremely safe. Um, you can see with the handle, it keeps your hands away, um, the pins from the blade at all times. It's recessed, uh, so it avoids accidents. It's a great tool. And uh, this this uh, crimper, this saw also ships uh, normal with the knife blade in it. So it's a, it's yes. a specific blade for cutting uh, hydraulic hose. And then, of course, we offer a two-inch six-wire um, hose saw also. Uh, this saw requires a lot more horsepower. You can see it's a five-horsepower, 220-volt. Um, so it requires a little bit of different uh, voltage, so just to be aware of if you're wearing the thing in. Um, it's heavy. It's big. It's easy to use. Again, it's the same platform, just everything is larger and industrial. It's meant to last a lifetime. It's a great saw. Good piece of equipment. Yeah, and th and these last two saws here are purpose built for cutting hydraulic hose. I think Dave mentioned. So, um, you know, so what you get is is a saw and a motor that's designed to cut hydraulic hose, and it does a very good job uh, at those uh, at those functions. Yeah, highly recommend this saw if you guys are making a lot of assemblies. We have a transition here. Yeah, thank you, Dave. I believe it's you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Dave. It's Keith, and hey, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Let's jump through pre crimp procedures on hose fabrication. Again, uh, on our crimp equipment, we send a specific molly coat paste with the crimpers, and that is all you need to make sure the die cones are lubed and uh, the die faces are ready to handle the stress of uh, crimping. So molly coat only. Uh, it used to be in the old days they'd say when it get, your die cone gets shiny like a 58 Cadillac bumper, it's time for a thin coat, a molly coat, and then everybody day goes like, what's a 58 Cadillac? So anyhow, 
So make sure if the die cone looks dry and shiny, you put a thin coat of Molly coat. No chassis grease, no anti-seize. I don't want to hear about it. And um, that's it. So die selection tables are in the catalog on pages B1 through B8. Or what I recommend when you're setting up a customer, you walk through eCrimp, put the hose types and sizes that you're going to fabricate at that customer's place of business. On, and check that out on eCrimp, print it, and then it'll tell you what die sets you need to confirm your selection. Okay? Next. And uh, this is also a, actually on that slide there. This is a good example I mentioned early that we have a series of dies. And uh, so as you look across on those uh, data tables for the different kind of crimpers uh, in the in the catalog, you can see that your half inch hose are going to use uh, like a 33 series dies, and you can see those across the crimpers. So it's uh, you know if you didn't know that ahead of time, that's a, a good little takeaway uh, for you guys on the um, die naming. Uh, uh, standards that we used. Thanks, Jason. Okay, Jacob. So also in our pre-crimp procedures, we also want to set up our, our, our settings for the crimper. So on the, the newer tablet-based crimpers, the GC32 TSI, the 96 TSI, and the new GC20, those are all tablet-based. So you pull up eCrimp on the tablet, and then it sets up the crimper correctly and tells you what die set you need, okay? Our other crimpers are GC16, the 420 mobile, and the PC707 are manual settings, and so you need a eCrimp app, mobile app, or, or a chart in order to set up the right setting for the crimper to hit the correct outside diameter on your crimped assembly, okay? Next. So stem insertion, again, remains one of the most critical manual applications for fabricating hose, okay? So the objective here is to be sure that the stem is fully inserted into the hose. That's the most critical thing you do. The rest of it is set up on equipment and is fairly automatic. But this, this step is still manual and still very important. So, on the, on the mega crimp couplings, we have insertion tools. I have many customers who have built metal or wood insertion tools for large diameter spiral couplings to make sure that the insertion depth is marked on the hose. And I have many customers who require the insertion uh, depth to be able to be seen behind the ferrule after the crimp, or they won't accept the assembly. So a lot of people require that today, so you insert the hose into the uh, the tool and mark it with a marker, and then when that assembly is crimped, the mark should be right behind the tail of that ferrule once it's crimped. So get those spiral couplings from dash 6 through dash 20, you can see that the stem is fully inserted into the hose by looking at through the gap between the uncrimped ferrule and the stem, and you can see the shoulder of that GS stem sitting on the cut end of the hose. So that's your verification for full stem insertion on spiral couplings through dash 20. So uh, again, all our performance specs are based and dependent upon the customer's full stem insertion into the uh, cut hose. So that's one of the last thing, one of the, one of the most critical things and last things you need to do before fabrication is make sure that that stem is fully inserted. Okay? So uh, let's see. Yeah, some uh, some people are going to say it's acceptable for a lot of people on the on the mega crimp couplings to set the fitting beside the cut end of the hose and mark it and put your nail behind the ferrule and then when you push the fitting down, the ferrule the uncrimped ferrule touches your fingernail that you held to make the mark. So there's there's a manual way to do this other than just uh, you know, making a mark. You can mark it and hold the mark with your nail of your finger and then the ferrule touches your nail, then you know you're, you're, you've done that correctly, all right? Um, also on pre-crimp procedures, um, again, the, the gate crimp system is always full length, full circumference crimp, okay? So that there should never be a flare or a tail. That's kind of going away these days, but in the old days, uh, we had a couple manufacturers, um, um, Weatherhead was famous for their flail, flared tail crimp, 
and some people uh, would insist on doing that on Gates products, which is incorrect. So again, full length, full circumference crimp, and the crimp insertion can be viewed um, easiest on some of these horizontal crimpers like the GC16, the GC32, the GC96. A lot of people insert the pre-crimped assembly or the, the uncrimped assembly through the back of the crimper forward so you can see that the, uh, the dies will be grabbing the, the ferrule at the correct spot and not create a flare or a tail. So um, that's the beauty of the horizontal ram. But in pictured here is the 707, and we're showing that the stem should not be above the dies. It should be a 16th to an eighth of an inch below the top of the dies, and that'll, that'll accomplish your full length, full circumference. Okay. All right. That's our pre-crimp procedures. Now let's move into some crimp equipment real quick. Here we go. We'll start with our new and and extremely portable, ultra portable, as we say here, GC16 mini crimper. You can see Marty's running the video. He's selecting from eCrimp app the correct die and setting. For the crimper, he's checking his die set, as you see there, and then he's going to dial through the dial vernier, uh, dial in the correct number on the, thim on the thumb gauge or thimble gauge, and he's going to insert the assembly from the back of the crimper. Okay. Those die segments, by the way, are loaded with what I call a mini quick change tool, which uh, loads all eight die segments in one motion. And then that you see Marty's got his finger on the thumb on the thimble gauge. So when that ram comes forward, the thimble comes up, and when it's flush with the face of the uh, thimble gauge, it will be flush. That'll tell you you've reached your crimp, correct crimp OD. And now that that there is an LED light also that lights on that uh, dial gauge as well. So it lights, and then it comes up flush with the face of the thimble gauge. And that, that tells you you've reached your correct crimp OD, and then you let off the power switch on the mobile pump. So this crimper, again, is incredibly lightweight. I think it's 44 pounds. And um, there it says it right there in print. And uh, the, the portable saw is a perfect match for this crimper. You get the saw and the crimper, buy them together. I would stress that with your customer. And you get two batteries with the pump. The one battery can run the saw. The other battery runs the pump. And uh, it's a great, great setup for ultra portability and uh, just a super solution for a lot of customers out there. So, okay. Thanks, Jason. Any, uh, did I miss anything, guys, on that? I think that covers it. So 80 crimps per battery, and there you go. All right. That is the GC16 XD. Thank you. I think you got it there. Absolutely. All right. The next uh, crimper is our Gates 420. This is a, there are thousands of these in the marketplace. that have been in, in, around Gates for over 35 years now. So, again, portable crimper. This weighs a little bit more. I think it's in the 70 to 80 pound range, uh, but it crimps quarter inch through number 20 spiral. Um, and so that's number 24 spiral. So um, Jacob inserted a picture of a uh, truck um, mount, that, which is most common for the 420. You see it in a lot of mobile truck fleets uh, in, a, in a cabinet on the side of the truck, and it slides out on a tray. The beauty of the mobile crimp 420 is it comes with a huge number of pump options. We make a uh, half or one and a half horsepower electric pump. Uh, we have shop air over hydraulic, which is one of my favorites. The hand pump, so if you want to work out, buy a hand pump. 12 volt and then 28 volt battery uh, pump. So there are lots of options for powering the 420 crimper. The digital dial is by far the most common crimper that's out in the market. So it has a battery powered LED light and audio beep. Uh, signal when it reaches the correct crimp OD, which is determined by the digital setting that you dial into the uh, uh, vernier, uh, the dial gauge at the top of the crimper. So um, the, the die sets in this crimper, as you can see,
go with the taper facing down, which is a, uh, the opposite of our 707. But just so there he is, Marty loading it, bottom load, right there through the top, the top of the die is an eighth of an inch below the, uh, excuse me, the top of the ferrule is an eighth of an inch below the top of the die, and the ram comes down, and when it reaches its crimp setting that you've dialed in, it lights and beeps, and there you go. So, great example there. So, we do make a positive stop version of this machine that doesn't have the dial uh, setting on it. It has a series of spacers and plates that you would use. A very rugged crimper for something that's going to be out in the weather, which uh, is not very desirable for a number of reasons, but we do make a positive stop machine that uh, uses spacers and plates like um, some other competitive manufacturers in the marketplace. Very rugged and, um, you know, very weatherproof, but again, de depending upon your stacking of spacers and plates, it's, it's kind of customer dependent upon setting that up right versus the digital dial that you see here. So, all right. So now, that's the, the 420, guys. And do we miss anything? We, yeah. Well, actually, if we go back for a second, um, the both the 420 and the GC16, you can also, if you have a 10,000 PSI pump that you can actuate, turn on, and shut off, uh, you can also use that to um, uh, operate your machine. And as you see down here, all of these all of these pumps that are here and eligible to be used for the 420 uh, that we offer in our Gates line, they're all sold separately. Those can also be used to operate the GC16. So there's a a lot of flexibility. Now the GC16 is designed to be portable so the 28 volt battery pump really matches well with it uh, but uh, you know so it's important to note that you know if you do have a 10,000 PSI pump already uh, you can use those in conjunction uh, with these crimp heads the 420 and the GC16. That's a good point Jason. I've, I've seen customers also use uh, uh, former Weatherhead customer pump systems from the old Weatherhead system, and they have a dead man switch, and they can be used for this machine to operate it as well, as long as it puts out 10,000 psi on the pump uh, uh, on the pump capability statement. So, yeah. Great. Thanks, and now let's jump in and talk a little bit about the uh, uh, the PC-707. Uh, this really has been our, our workhorse for, for decades. Uh, it's an excellent inch and a quarter shop crimper. Um, you know, so it's been around for a number of, like I mentioned, a number of years. And um, all of the, the crimper, the pump, and the dies are all sold separately. Now, the pump that we offer is the pump that goes with the 707. So if you happen to you know, have a, a pump that uh, came back from a customer or you have them separately, you can, you know, you can uh, combine those to make that. But normally people would buy the crimper and the pump from Gates uh, for the, uh, you know, for the crimp system there for you. The, um, the uh, PC-707 is going to use either printed material or like Marty showed, uh, using his phone or some kind of digital uh, information. But what you do is you get that information from the, you know, from your source. Ideally, it would be digital. You make sure you're, you've got the correct dies that you've inserted the hose correct, correctly if, as we've talked about that uh, uh, small gap below the top um, of the uh, die set. Make sure it's in there. You would slide the... Um, die and backup cone or, or the cone assembly all back into the back to the locating pins and push the button for the 707. Now uh, once it re reaches the limit uh, that you've set with the limit switch via the digital dial the machine will shut off and back off and then you'll be able to pull out the uh, assembly. Typically you just lift up the cone a little bit and it can slide right out to you know like Marty has here show the the finished assembly. Uh, again, this one, a uh, very popular one for us. Uh, what's real nice about it is uh, you're going to be able to use uh, normal outlet power. So your 115 volt um, is going to run the pump and the, the crimper. And if you happen to have 220, uh, there is, uh, we do have the ability to have a uh, 220 version of this. So uh, so if that's something you do have, uh, you'll need to get uh, the the electrical kit to go into the crimper to have the conversion to 220 for the machine so but okay so that's like the 707 guys any questions on the 707 or comments 
before we jump to the GC20. Okay. So now let's take a real quick look at the uh, GC20. Now this is this is an upgrade to the PC707. So you can see them out side by side. You can see they're very similar in appearance, but uh, the the GC20 does feature um, um, many upgrades to the 707. Many of those upgrades there have been kind of in discussions over the years, and um, and really the it, it shares a lot of the mechanical components so the mechanical benefits plus you get the digital information so you see the tablet on the on the front there um, that that tablet allows for customization so it allows you to um, get to you know create your own list of favorites in there uh, to arrange them in the order that you want uh, it allows you to um, um, really you know give you much better control so the tablet actually you interface with the tablet the tablet then via Bluetooth inter interfaces with the crimper to create the control of the crimper so that digital um, uh, that digital interface gives us one other uh, nice benefit that we see across the crimp uh, that we've seen for years across crimpers and that is to do individual die offsets so uh, it's a recent upgrade to the controller that's out there and what that allows is if you get a little bit of die wear or you need to make some slight adjustments uh, because of one die you can go into that one die create an offset to really give yourself um, uh, and your shop um, much much better uh, finish crimp ODs for that. Now, a few other other features we'll point out here. Uh, it also includes a work light. You can kind of see it's illuminated. There's a switch uh, on the left hand side, but it illuminates the crimp area as well. And then also it ships standard with that uh, uh, die cone handle. And uh, so that makes it easier to uh, pick the die cone up. Uh, historically, if your if your hand was large enough, you could pick up over top, or many people had to use two hands to pick that die cone up. This uh, makes it much easier to get that uh, die cone off the die sets. Now, just so that you'll know, so that we're on the same page, all of the die cones now are going to have the pre-drilled handle. Uh, the GC20 ships with the handle, but if you uh, when you start getting the um, 707s, if you do order those, the die cones that do ship with that, there, there may be a like a transition time, but ultimately all the die cones we send out will have that pre-drilled handle. So if you're interested in adding that uh, handle to your 707 and it's got the pre-drilled uh, hole in the in the die cone, you can add that handle to it after the fact. So. So that's the um, uh, that's the GC20. So I think we've got Dave talking about some of the larger machines now. I just want to say, Dave, yeah. you know, we're, we're doing we're, we're doing safe hydraulics again. Everybody can see that Gates is trying to make crimper operation as safe and simple as possible. Starting with the GC20 now, and then through the crimpers that Dave is going to walk through. I mean, you just see an an, an effort by Gates to take away the complications or the, or the training required to run a crimper machine to make it as simple as possible and as foolproof as possible. Great emphasis on safety. Thank you. Oh, and I also see down at the bottom of the, the page, um, because they share such a similar platform, if you have an existing 707 out there and you're looking to do an upgrade, we actually do have a retrofit kit that allows you to retrofit your uh, PC existing PC 707 to uh, GC 20, so you get full, you know, um, full conversion um, to, uh, to the um, to the functionality of the GC 20 with the digital interface between uh, the crimper and or between the tablet and the crimper and the digital inter interface between the user and the crimper as well. So, uh, so that's certainly an option out there uh, for for you guys if you if you're interested in getting uh, an upgrade on that. So that's the 707 to GC20 upgrade. Great. Thank you, Jason. So before we start on the GC32, uh, I just wanted to touch, we do have a crimper that we don't have a video listed or a, or a current uh, slide on, and that is the SC32. It's been around for a long time, and I just want to mention that if you do need a more economical uh, two-inch manual type crimper um, with micrometer settings and things like that. It uses the same die sets as our PC-707 in the quarter through inch and a quarter sizes, and then we have to use a little bit more complicated of a double angle 
uh, for the larger inch and a half and two inch. Um, but I just wanted to point out that you can use your existing die sets uh, from the 707 um, for that SC32. And that machine is also still available and in stock. Um, then we move into kind of my favorites, the GC32 TSI. Um, this crimper crimps up to two inch six wire hose um, and two and a half inch industrial size hoses, more like your GMVs, your return lines, water hoses, and things like that. Um, it's extremely intuitive. Same type of technology that we talked about on our GC20 with a touch screen. Um, if you've got Wi-Fi capability, you get notifications and updates. We do really cool things like put your manual on there, serviceability, um, remote login, should we have to you know, make an update remotely. Uh, when your Gates guy shows up, he can reach back to Denver for assistance and get Marty's technical assistance to take control of it. Um, just a lot of really cool features. Um, build a library of your common favorites or your OE hoses that you build over and over. Um, when you watch the cycle of this machine, this has got something really cool called our pinch decompression uh, feature, which basically assures that the crimp OD is within tolerance. Um, there's a delay after it crimps, it takes a couple of seconds, the thing releases and then crimps back down measures some uh, calculations based on force and how hard it had to squeeze to make sure with, with, we're within specification. If you find that that is slowing you down um, for a production reason, uh, communicate with us. That feature can be adjusted so you do one in every 10 crimps if you're making 1,000 hoses or one in every 20, depending on what your, your SPC requirements may need to be. But this machine has all kinds of capabilities and features that we can tweak um, to help make sure that it's meeting your needs. Move on to the next one, please. And I'll let that play real quick, Dave, here, because we got a second and sure. uh, the video seems to be worries. running a little behind. It made it look like it was pinching for a very yeah. long time. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no worries. Yeah, like you said, you all can change that setting and all of that, but it, it's much quicker than the videos coming off here with a little delay. So we'll move on to the 96. 96 is basically a, a complete redo, the TSI 2-inch on steroids. This machine crimps up to 3-inch 6-wire um, and 6-inch industrial hose. Uh, it's got the same tablet-based function all of the goodies, all of the favorites and the, the cheat sheets and all of the things you need, the manuals, operational manuals, training videos. Um, you've got Wi-Fi access and Internet access. Really cool feature about this is if you operate, depending on how your machine is set up, uh, from front to back or back to front, there is a mount on the back of this crimper to slide that tablet out and turn it around to the other side so you've got easy accessibility to see what's going on. Um, these things have foot pedals and they have push button controls. So there's a lot of convenience to this crimper. Um, same basic platform. What Marty is showing you there is we have a set of spacer dies. This uses the same die sets from quarter inch through two and a quarter that your TSI uh, 32 would use. And then when you use larger for industrial hoses, three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch, et cetera, we have specific dies that crimp to an OD for your industrial hoses. Um, great crimper, very intuitive, uh, very easy to use, same decompression, you know, measuring tools. Um, I've had tremendous success with it. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, other thing yeah, that's yeah, nice. to add to those crimpers? Yeah, the... Um uh, the other thing on these uh, particular crimpers is their horizontal load. So when you see Marty here crimping a half inch hose in a in a machine that's capable up to six inches, you kind of, you know, it looks kind of like a size mismatch. Uh, but when you start getting to those larger hoses that are heavier, uh, whether it's from a loading table or otherwise, that horizontal load is is a significant ergonomic benefit uh, for these crimpers. Plus that open uh, open face allows you to get your bent tubes. Uh, and, uh, and your complex couplings uh, fit in there uh, so much nicer so that you have the clearance to, uh, to crimp those hoses. So when you start getting to the bigger hoses, you get to, you know, some of those large ends that become complex to, to work around, and there's a huge value there. Now, with this machine being 
so large and such a large capability on it, there is another feature that's really nice. Now that tablet, uh, like the GC20, is is uh, Bluetooth to the machine. And uh, if you're going to be loading the machine from behind and you've got a larger hose, there's actually a tablet relocation um, a holder that's located on the back side of that crimper, kind of, you know, back kind of where Marty's elbow would be right now on his left arm. And what it allows you to do is move that tablet over to there so you can control the machine uh, from over on that side as well. So that, along with the foot uh, pedal, gives you some uh, great flexibility on this machine. There are a couple of great YouTube videos. You're welcome to log in and watch on these machines as well. They're extremely intuitive. You can adjust the dwell, how fast, how far that crimper opens up. So if mm -hmm. you're crimping a bunch of quarter-inch hoses, you don't need to wait for the thing to open all the way back up. You can, you've got a lot of field adjustability right at your fingertips. Right. 